my name is Taylor and this is my favorite bear and despite how awesome bear is today I'm gonna be talking about reasons why you shouldn't get a ferret like him so even though ferrets can be like little awesome creatures and stuff they do come with their own set of cons unfortunately and it's really easy to find reasons why you should get them so today I'm gonna be that person who tells you why you shouldn't get them and bears had enough, so I'm gonna go let him run. Okay, the first thing I wanna talk about that's not necessarily a pro when you get a ferret is the cost of having a ferret. Ferrets can be extremely expensive. So first off, what you have to look at is the cost of the actual ferret. I've done some research and most shelters charge about $75 per ferret. I did see a shelter or two that only charged $50, so keep that in mind. But if you end up going to a chain pet store, like I had to get Barrett Petco because our shelter temporarily closed. Thank God it's open again, but I thought they weren't going to, so I went to Petco, and he was $200 there. So it's a lot of money to spend just on the ferret, and keep in mind, you're probably going to want to get two ferrets, maybe not right away if it's your first ferret like me, because I plan on just getting my feet into the water and then getting a second ferret. So I still have to pay that second cost of $75 from the shelter. So keep that in mind. If you're getting two ferrets from Petco, you could be spending $400 on your ferrets alone. The second thing I'd like to talk about in terms of cost is vet bills. Vet bills can be extremely expensive. A lot of people who impulse buy ferrets don't understand that they cost a lot of money. For example, the initial veterinary exam can cost around $100 because after I got bare, took him to the vet like a responsible pet owner, and it actually turned out he needed a stool sample, so I had to pay for that, and then on top of that, he ended up having an internal parasite, so I had to pay for his medication, which was not cheap. And then on top of that, you have to look at vaccination costs. I don't know how much um, vaccinations cost, obviously it varies by vet, but Bear already had his first vaccinations when I got him, so I didn't need to worry about that. So just keep that in mind, but you have to vaccinate them every year for rabies and canine distemper. Additionally, you could come upon some type of emergency, and emergency surgeries alone, just the surgery part, can cost $1,000. And I almost had that problem with Bear. I'm actually a couple hundred dollars in debt to my parents to pay them back for his medical bills because he had a bowel obstruction and had to have two sets of x-rays. Each set of x-rays cost about $100. And then he also needed fluid under his skin to help him pass it. He needed mineral oil, which costs not too much, but it costs some money. And then you also have to look at, he had barium x-rays to make sure it was all out. So it was about, I think I spent around $400 in a 48-hour period for him which is a lot of money, so plan to have at least $1,000 on hand just in case you do have an emergency with your ferret. So the last thing for ferrets that actually costs a lot of money up front is the cage. A lot of people don't know that ferrets actually aren't caged animals and they shouldn't be in their cage for long periods of time. So with that in mind, I got Bear the biggest cage I could fit in my room. It's a Ferret Nation Deluxe, so it's like two stories, it's five feet tall, it's insanely huge. And it costs about $250 on Amazon, and it's probably the cheapest you're going to find it for. And actually, that was the hardest thing for me to save up for was the cage, because it was just cost so much money. So please keep that in mind. The next expensive item on a ferret, and I know there's a lot of them, is the food. You can get cheap food, but it actually won't last as long because there's fillers and stuff in it. So I highly recommend that you get good food, because even though it costs a little bit more, it actually lasts longer in the long run because it's so much better for them. And there's a higher amount of nutrients, so it'll keep them fuller longer. So another necessary thing for ferrets that can cost a lot of money is just the various materials that they need in their cage. And sorry if you hear crinkling in the background, Bear's playing in his favorite plastic bag. So I'm keeping an eye on him. But um, you have various materials. You're going to need food and water bowls and possibly a water bottle because I have both for bear. Um, you're going to need a litter pan if you're litter training them. If you're not, you're going to need bedding to line the bottom of the cage. You're going to need hammocks and toys and all this kind of stuff. And then you're also going to need like nail clippers. And I have brushes for bear because his fur tends to get kind of gross and matted and he needs to be brushed out. You're probably going to need ferret shampoo. You're going to need cotton swabs, which doesn't cost a lot, but you're going to go through a lot of them, which I'll get to in a little bit. So keep that in mind that the little things, they really can add up. The last thing in terms of money I'd like to talk about is, again, 
vet bills because ferrets are prone to so many different illnesses such as insulinoma, adrenal cancer, um, intestinal blockages, heart disease, and all other types of illnesses. And sometimes no matter how good care you take of your ferrets, they're gonna get one of these diseases. It's not always your fault. They are just prone to it. So if this happens to your ferret or it has happened to your ferret, don't just jump and blame yourself based on diet and exercise because sometimes it just happens. It's genetic with them. Don't feel bad. I'm sure you are taking the best care of your ferret possible. Okay, so the next major con about ferrets is that they are very, very messy. So while ferrets themselves think they like to be nice and tidy, they're not nice and tidy on human standards. For example, they love to poop in corners of their cage, but if you don't have a splatter guard, I don't have a splatter guard right now because I don't have enough money to pay for one, but it will fall outside the cage. And when you have to go in there and clean it, it smells horrible. It's probably the worst part of having a ferret for me. In addition to making that kind of mess out of their cage, you have to deal with them digging in their food bowl, which they love to do for whatever reason, and sometimes he won't eat off the floor, so you're wasting a bit of food. And then if you have a water dish instead of a water bottle, they will splash in it, which is why Bear has both, because he will splash all the water out of his water bowl and won't drink it off the floor. So keep that in mind. On top of that, if you're someone who likes your room to be super organized and clean or whatever room they're in, not going to happen. They will find a way to get into everything. If you have something valuable you don't want them to either knock over or steal, hide it before they do. Please keep that in mind. Another thing in terms of messiness of your room, their supplies can be seriously cluttered. Um, like for me, I have a storage area underneath the cage that has his stuff, like his grooming, his food, his treats, his litter and all that stuff. But on top of the cage, I actually have all the cleaning materials I want out of his reach and it looks really ugly. I have so much crap put on top of there and if you're someone who likes things to look organized and pretty, that's not gonna work. <laughs> And the last thing I would like to talk about in terms of this is you will have to clean their ears pretty often and their earwax is a little gross until you get used to it. So ferret earwax isn't like ours where it's clearish to yellow, it's actually a reddish brown color and it doesn't smell bad but it's kind of gross especially when it comes out in a giant chunk as it tends to do. And you actually have to do this every two weeks most likely. Some ferrets can go longer but if your ferret is like Bear, I have to do his weekly otherwise they get so disgusting to the point where they bother him and he's scratching at them and he loses hair behind his ears because of it. And I actually thought he had ear mites that was so bad but that's another story. So keep that in mind. You're going to have to do all those messy things or deal with all those messy things if you get a ferret. So the next major con I have about ferrets is that they are smelly. This is something that I don't think people put enough emphasis on. And the first thing we're going to start with is the actual ferret musk. They do have a natural smell just like dogs and cats have a natural smell and humans have a natural smell that we cover up with deodorant. But it's much stronger than a dog's or a cat's. I personally don't think it smells bad, but um, my brother is someone who cannot stand the smell. If he's holding bear, he like has to breathe through his mouth. He doesn't like it so much. So keep that in mind, and if you have a chance when you're going to look to adopt or buy a ferret at either a pet store or a shelter, you should be given the chance to hold them. If you're not, don't get your ferret there, but when you're holding a ferret, just give it a nice deep sniff and think to yourself, will I be able to stand this or will I be able to get used to it? Because eventually, you will go nose blind. Bear was just off causing mischief, so I had to go get him. He's going to sit with Mama for a minute until he calms down. But um, the next big thing I would like to talk about within the smell category is, I mentioned earlier, was the smell of their poop. It is gross. It, I, no words for it. And when you go to pick it up when it's still soft and you, like, squish it, it gets disgusting. And keep in mind, you're going to have to clean this up a lot. Ferrets poop every four to six hours because they have such a fast intestinal tract. He's done. Let me put him down. So keep that in mind. You're going to have to clean that. And because of the musk and the poop smell, the cage is going to have an odor no matter what. I mean, if you wanted to, you could use some kind of scented cleaner, but I would not recommend that, especially if it has essential oils in it. It is not good for ferrets. Their liver doesn't break down um, the enzymes of essential oils very well. So I just would keep that away from them at all costs. So keep that in mind, you're going to have to deal with a bit of a stink if you get a ferret. Okay, the next major con I'd like to talk about is the fact that they are time consuming. And I knew this getting into it and I was totally prepared, but people who impulse buy ferrets when they see them at the pet store don't really understand what they're getting into. 
So the first thing that's really time consuming about them is ferrets are not caged animals. We keep them in cages for our own convenience and in most cases for their safety as well because my entire house is not ferret proofed. It's not safe for him to be roaming around my house, so I don't let him roam my house. But because of that, he needs to be out of his cage for at least four hours a day. That's right, four hours at the very minimum. And actually, I try to get bear out longer than that whenever I'm in my room for any reason, whether I'm cleaning, doing homework, reading, whatever I'm doing, if I'm in my room, he's running around or at least taking a nap outside of the cage. And then out of those four hours, at least two hours minimum must be spent one-on-one -on -one with each ferret. So if you have multiple ferrets, that's two hours per ferret one-on-one -on -one with you, with one in the cage, one out of the cage, directly interacting with you. That's what a good ferret owner does. So the last part that's pretty time consuming might just be time consuming for me, but it takes me forever to clean his cage just because he does go to the bathroom so often. And obviously the more fairs you have, the more time it'll take you to clean their cage. So just keep that in mind. You're going to have to set a good chunk of your time every single day to clean their cage. And I tend to like multitask while I'm doing this and kill two birds with one stone. I'll let Bear run around while I'm cleaning his cage so that way he gets outside time and I get cleaning time. So the next major con I'd like to talk about is the fact that fairs can be exhausting. They're super high energy, fast noodles that need your attention, especially in my scenario where I only have one right now, so Bear needs me as his sole playmate, so no matter how tired I am, if he wants to play, I get up off my butt, turn off the movie, and run around and chase him because that's his favorite game. So keep that in mind when you're getting a ferret. Even if you have a pair that play together, they're gonna need your one-on-one -on -one attention, as I said earlier, and that can be exhausting. Ferrets are tiring. You're gonna have to play with them and clean their cage and take care of them no matter what's been going on in your day. So please keep that in mind. So another big con that most people don't really understand is the commitment that you have when you adopt a ferret. They have a pretty long lifespan for a small animal. In the United States, ferrets tend to live around seven to eight years. This lifespan can actually be extended through a really good diet and a healthy amount of exercise. So just keep that in mind that you could be looking at closer to 10 years with your ferret. If you live in Europe or Australia, your ferret could actually live up to 15 years, and part of this is because they originated there, so they kind of have superior genetics, and then also the breeders tend to be more equipped, because they're super popular pets, especially in Australia where they're used for a sport called ferreting. So not only are they pets, but they're a sport animal, so their breeders really take it seriously, kind of in the way we have professional dog breeders in the United States that take it really seriously, so they do tend to live longer there. But either way, you're looking at around a 10 year or more commitment. So really think about that before you get a ferret. Because no ferret should be bounced around home to home because a couple people didn't understand how long they'd have to take care of it. So the last con I'm going to talk about is can actually be a pro, and it was a pro for me because I love this quality about them, but ferrets can be very mischievous. The name ferret actually comes from a Latin word that means little thief which is beyond true. They love stealing things and stashing. That's about half of the time spent Bear is out of his cage. He is stashing. So keep that in mind. They tend to be mischievous. They like to make a mess. They just love causing chaos. And if you're like me, you love that excitement they bring. But if you're someone who likes things a certain way, they want a predictable animal, don't get a ferret. Not a good idea. They're not predictable. <laughs> Let's just end on that. As challenging as bear can be, for me, he is totally worth it. So when you're looking at getting a ferret, please think about these cons before you go ahead and buy. Because some people just can't get used to some of these things. <laughs> and they end up getting a ferret that isn't properly cared for or properly loved and appreciated. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. I actually got my first subscriber and I'd like to give them a little shout out because they do have a channel of their own, which is much bigger than mine, but I still appreciate it. So I'm going to put it in here anyway. They are Little Paws 1812 and I'll put that right here so you can see it. And honestly, I would go check out their channel because they have such a cute little channel like information on ferrets and rats and just cute little small animals. I think it's adorable. I think you will like it as well. So thank you Little Paws for being my first ever subscriber. Have a great day and have fun with your ferret. <laughs>